Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm here checking out Hyper Devotion Noir... God damn it, you didn't have to say the title for me. Hyper Devotion Noir, Goddess Blackheart. As always, we'll just go have a look at the options real quick before we really get into it. So you, you do have dual voice options here. I haven't actually tried the Japanese, but I imagine that it's the same as it always is. The Japanese is fully voiced everywhere, and then the English is just the main story and stuff like that. They don't voice everything, which is a bit of a shame, but... You know, we'll have to deal with it. I recommend turning the background volume music down because it's usually up somewhere around here and the voices can kind of get drowned out by it, so I would suggest just keeping it down about here. You can still hear it just fine. You've also got a lot of battle options that you can change, and that's quite nice. It, it's a, What the hell is going on? I've, I'm dropping frames like crazy and I have no idea why. We'll just ignore it for the time being and hope it goes away once we get into some actual battles. So we're just going to hit load real quick. This game I've got about... How long have I got in? About four and a half hours? Yeah, it's about right. So we'll just load this on up. So here we are in the main base, which is last station, as one would expect. You've got all the typical Neptunia side characters here. Now I will not nap nap your face. So we got a bunch of different things here. We got item dev and disc dev, which work exactly the same way as they do in your regular Hyper Dimension Neptunia games. You have materials, you use the materials to build stuff. Fairly easy. You also got disc dev. Enemies drop chips, and these chips can be put into these burnable discs. And once you do, they get specific properties. So everything from enemy slash and pierce resist and all that down to specific resistances versus enemy different types of enemies. Bunch of elemental defense, you get the idea. I haven't actually made any discs yet because I haven't really needed them. We've got the shop as well. I hope it's obvious what that does. And we've also got the CPU hotel, which is actually fairly different to what you might be expecting. But this is where everybody else hangs out. Me thinks some pudding I shall see you. Sounds about the... That's like a mantra of life right there. But it's also the basic gallery. So you've got your videos, which actually contain cutscenes and all that. You've got your music, and you've got your photo albums, which contain all the backgrounds and some specific CG events. No comment. So yeah, this, this is basically a Hyper Dimension Neptunia game through and through, except it's a strategy game. Who can argue with that? You've also got the Basilicom. You level this whole area up by doing things, by redeeming your sim points. You get sim points by buying stuff in the shop, and then you use it to buy stuff here. Like, you could, I've bought three things so far. I've bought a carpet, a boombox, And a cushion, which is absolutely terrible as a cushion, by the way. But nevertheless, we will just exit the Basilicom. So that's pretty much everything you can do here. It's pretty thin on the ground, actually. I mean, everybody does have their own equipment sets you can get, along with crystals that change their alignment. It works on a sort of... Well, not exactly rock, paper, scissors system. It's like a circular system. Everything's weak and strong to something. You've got things like rings and bracelets and blades and... They each give them specific specific stats. So as you can see, it's all the Hyper Dimension Neptunia stats. Just strategy fight. You can also come into the library for your statistics. Your character challenges. Now these are actually kind of neat. Pull these specific challenges off. And you get extra points to any particular stat. So if I gain 10 XP with Neptune when she's not deployed the first time around... She gets a bonus to her stats, which is quite nice. You also got Lily Ranks, which are fairly similar to Lily Ranks as they were back in Neptunia, except they change something different in this game, and I'll show that off once again into the battles. I'm gonna have to like do this video in two parts so I can figure out what the bloody hell is wrong with the game's frame well with the computer's frame rate. The game's frame rate is fine. The performance is actually pretty nice. You can come here and it's funny how they actually list all the main characters under monster info. That's kind of hilarious. But yeah, you can see all the figurines and everything. Do they have uh, the animations? No, they don't. Oh, I oh I know why they're in monsters because you actually have to defeat them as part of the story. I'm again, I'm only four hours in. This game goes for a lot longer than four hours. I can promise you that much. 
But yeah. And you've also got history reports, which is the which is the tutorials, and you've got all your typical loading and saving options and your configuration menu there. Yeah, play games, play games, play games. You're playing a game now, but play more games. That's a good idea. So we go to the mission HQ, and you can do two things. You can either accept a mission or load a simulation. So you accept a mission, and it, it's a bunch of side quests, which are pretty basic. And you've also got the main story mission at the top all the time, and it's always got rewards, as you can see. And also of note is that if you try and load a simulation, it's actually the story missions, but they actually restructure them a little bit to make them slightly harder. So you have a bunch of different things to do. Pretty much all the time, really. I actually kind of hate to fuse the time bombs. There's a pain in the ass. But anyway, I'll be right back once I figure out what's wrong with my recording kit's frame rate, and then we can go straight into a battle. Okay, I think I've fixed it, so we're going to go hop into a mission now. I wonder if the simulations actually have the cutscenes that appear before the actual missions. If they don't, I can always go and show one off, but it would be nice to do it just right off the bat. No, it doesn't, unfortunately, but oh well, we can just play it anyway, and I can go back and... That video menu back in the CPU hotel it actually contains every single cutscene, so we don't have to worry about that. So, here we go. We've got a couple of things we can do here, but none of them are very important. We can just come here and equip equipment to people if we want to. We can check our units, we can check the enemy units. And we can go to our library to get all that stuff, and we can also go and hop in the system for all that. Not that big of a deal. So let's assign some units to this battle, shall we? Now this battle's probably way over leveled for me at the moment, so I'm just going to breeze right through it. But I'm going to assign my strongest guys anyway. So, you have up to a few troops at a time. It depends on the battle you're fighting, and whoever you assign as leader actually has a, an effect on what happens. So you can assign Noir to be your leader, and she'll give you an extra space for everyone to move, but everybody's attack will be down by 10%. So if you need to move really quickly, that's a good one. But if, you, if you're like me, and you want this to be supremely easy... <laughs> admittedly, the game is actually pretty damn easy to begin with, but if you want the game to be supremely easy, use Blanc every time, because multiplying your HP by 1.5 times normal is fantastic. So we'll just deploy all of them and we will begin our battle. So here we go. So this is actually a fairly simple turn-based battle system. So we'll just go and select one of our characters. Now, that meter up there is our Lily rank. So what we want to do is we want to have two characters close together so we can actually get out well it's not the lily rank it's the lily something i can't remember exactly what it's called but anyway what we want to do is we want to move our characters somewhere where they can be next to each other so if we move actually no hold on i've done this wrong can we move noir up to here we can um neptune up to here so we'll move neptune we'll, we'll move neptune here can i talk please and we'll move noir next to her now every character has a, a set of skills Items, the ability to lift and throw stuff, but that usually doesn't come in handy except for special circumstances, and the ability to just basically attack. Now, if we use a skill while we're standing next to a buddy, not only does it reduce the SP cost, but this happens. Yep, they give each other just that tiny little bit of encouragement, and we get hard points for it. So, as you can see up there, we've gotten 20 hard points. Or lily points, or whatever the bloody hell it's called. I'll be damned if I know. I'm just going to move Blanc over here. Turn it this way. Now, it does actually matter what direction you're in. With most strategy games, depending on whether or not you get attacked from the side or the back, you'll get more damage done to you. There's also a bunch of different attributes you can get. Like, as I said before, everybody can be aligned to a specific thing. Like, all my guys are aligned to fire because I've only picked up fire crystals at the moment. But yeah, if you're attacked by something you're weak to, you'll get, get more damage taken. Simple as that, really. This is just a demonstration battle. I'll go on to something a lot harder. So yeah, as you can see... Blanc right now has 400 health, and she took 5 from that attack, so... Yeah, there's also a bunch of traps on the floor and all that which do damage if we get knocked onto them or something like that. It's not that big of a deal. So what we'll do is we'll move Blanc up here... And we'll tell her to wait, and we'll use another special attack. And yes, every character has a picture for that. It's kind of ridiculous. 
and the perspectives change the more people you have next to a computer at the same time also the more people you have next to a computer at the same time the more the more hard points you get so it's worth trying to keep all you guys together if you're gonna go and eliminate a bunch of people at the same time keep them all close together so they can all get the maximum amount of heart bonus and you've also got a bunch of skills that can be used to like upgrade anyone in particular so if I just do this for Noir I'll probably get a bunch of points for that. So Noir not only gets a bunch of improved stats for that, but we also get more heart points. So you actively get rewarded by focusing on teamwork with the ability to, well, we'll see. Probably already saw it in the menu if you're paying attention, but we'll just have a look anyway. So, one of the benefits of getting maximum heart points is that you can use special moves. <laughs> Fucking Neptune. So yeah, you get special moves, which do absolutely amazing damage. And every time you kill an enemy, they drop an item. So, you probably... What you want to be doing is you want to be just destroying every enemy that you can. You want to be slaughtering everyone so badly that you get overkills on them because overkills actually drop more loot. They dro it drops better quality loot, I should say. So actually overkilling people is a really good idea. Now we'll just wait for them to come to us. Yeah, since they can float, they don't get any sort of negative benefit from landing on that. It's kind of annoying. The AI is also kind of stupid. I mean, they do do some intelligent things, but yeah, that can happen. Freaking counters. But yeah, we'll um, we'll show off the other benefit for heart points in a moment. So, if we use if we use Noir's muscle memory move here and give Neptune a bit of a boost. Neptune can, since we have 50 heart points and it costs 30 to do what we're about to do, we can go into HDD mode. Now, this is the reason why, well, I think this might be the reason the game's so easy. HDD mode is supremely overpowered for the reason that... You can do twice the amount of moves and attacks you normally would be able to. It's kind of insane. As you can see, I'm just getting challenges in the top right there. But yeah, you can do like a ton of extra movements and attacks when you're in HDD mode. It's kind of nuts. It's so OP. Then again, there's a fair amount of OP stuff in this game. Because if you have all four CPUs out and you get them all into HDD mode at once, you are basically an unstoppable force. Because everybody gets the stat upgrades, everybody gets twice the amount of moves. Unfortunately, you only get the four CPUs. There's no new CPUs, or at least as far as I'm aware, the current four hours I'm in. I'm into the game, that is. Still, it's just... It's just kind of nuts, because everybody gets overpowered if you have everybody as four... As for HDD modes, it's it's so strong. Like usually, you'd only be able to move or attack once, but jeez. Unfortunately, I'll just have to wait here. Well, actually, hold on. If I I'll I'll do, I'll do this because this will get me some bonus hard points at the very least. That's some amazing art, by the way. That is some amazing heart. Yes. So we'll just have you wait there. And Noir is going to have to deal with this. Easy enough, really. I wish I could make the enemy faces go a bit faster. There is one story stage that you have to do to progress. And at the end of every end phase, there's a bunch of platforms that end up moving. And when they end up moving, they take freaking forever to get anywhere. So you end up just putting the Vita down for a minute and just waiting for it because there's not much else you can do. You just have to wait for like a full minute for the whole turn to, to finish, I should say. Just come on, brain. File not found. 
I mean, there is a bunch of options here, but unfortunately, double speed doesn't really help that much. So we'll just continue our movement up here. Maybe it's just Noir that has the double movement, but... Nevertheless, it's still kind of OP because all the girls get a bunch of extra stats and points when they go into HDD mode. And the game really isn't that hard, which is the funny thing, because... I mean... I was playing on normal, and the only stage I've had trouble with so far is one that not only introduces new traps and stuff, which I kind of fell victim to because I didn't see them in the process of actually playing the uh, playing the stage. The game doesn't go to the big trouble of pointing it out. I'll put it that way. So my own stupidity kind of got me into trouble there. But, again, it was the only stage I failed on because I wasn't paying attention. And I ended up suffering for it. But when I actually had an idea of what I was doing in the stage... Meanie. When I actually had an idea of what I was doing in the stage, I actually finished it off really easy. And I haven't failed another mission since. As long as you're not being an absolute moron by doing really stupid crap, not getting your lily points, and... Well, not doing anything else, really. It's just... It's really easy to pass almost every stage without trying. I mean, you can willingly, like, cap yourself. I am playing on normal and not on hard, so you never know. But, I mean, even for normal, this feels surprisingly easy. Maybe hard is a bit harder. And you can go down to easy if you want, if you fail a mission too many times. But, it's just a bit, you know, just a bit easy from what I was expecting. And, unfortunately, you can't change your difficulty from inside the game itself, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, I have to say. And by the way, you get a ton of goddamn credits in this game, so even if you have nothing to buy at the shop, just stock up on items that can remove status effects, because you still get lily points for it. And there is a bunch of different status effects. So, yeah, that's enough for that. We'll go play one more mission. We'll go play the story mission that I'm up to. I don't think it'll have any sort of story spoilers, but frankly, no story has happened yet. I'm only on Chapter 3. So, alright, let's see. Top Iron's Kill Count. So, this is actually pretty interesting. This is the first type of mission like this that I've encountered. So, we'll just hop right in, shall we? Hopefully, there'll be a cutscene to show off the voice acting. I imagine there will be. Judgment is nigh. Yeah, there is. You are the secretary of Noir and you don't speak. So it's a lot like Hyperdimension Neptunia PP. Such Thankfully, it's a lot better. Which will reveal our path. Yeah. What should we do? As heroes, your level is important. Why not see who can defeat the most enemies in a single battle map? I like it. Sounds neat. What do you think, Ayn? I foresee no difficulties. Destiny has already given its blessing upon the... But Destiny is such a mediocre game. That's a joke everybody else has made. I can really grind my gears faster than I can grind levels. <laughs> You'll eat those words, I promise. So it's a monster slaying competition? Okay then, we're gonna get ready. Yes. We should watch from afar and act as judges for this battle. Hey, wait! Lady Noir! What now? Did you forget something? No. I wanted to ask you to join my party for this quest. It's pretty common sense that when a hero goes on a legendary quest, they end up with a full party, right? Well, sure, that's how it tends to go. I don't mind, but does Pine mind if she has nobody else in her party? What a three-person party claims to do? I can return and do the same on my own. None can suffer my sword in me. See? Then who's going to judge and stop? Nobody's left if we join your party. This does inhibit one from observing from an unbiased spirit. Only there was someone among us unable to fight. I think I get what you're saying. 
You understand, right, Secretary? The matter is settled. Let's get this match started. So yeah, all the favorite CPUs show up, and there's a bunch of new characters, and they're all... It's all very Hyper Dimension Neptunery. I just... Yeah, it is Hyper Dimension Neptunia, but in a strategy game, and a half-decent one at that. It's a very... Simple thing, really. Very, very simple idea. Do you like Neptunia? Well, you'll probably like this. <laughs> not, much, not much else to say about it, really. The strategy itself is fairly... Jesus Christ, that's a giant Dugu. The strategy itself is very simple. And it, look, it looks nice, it sounds nice. It's got the Hyper Dimension Neptunia charm to it. If you know what I mean when I say that. If you've played any other Hyper Dimension Neptunia game past, say, Hyper Dimension Neptunia Mark II, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say the Hyper Dimension Neptunia charm. I have to stop saying Hyper Dimension Neptunia or I'm going to trip up on it eventually. It's like a tongue twister. So let's get a few characters out here. So yeah, sometimes you have to take some characters along, as you can see. Noir has to come along because she's got event, event, event next to her name. So you have zero choice in bringing her along. Also, I've noticed that characters will tend to get bonus XP. Everybody who doesn't go out gets XP at the end of a match, so they still all level up along with you. So if you're forced to take someone like Leaf Fire along, because there's like five characters for this deploy, all, de deploy then you can... Then you'll be able to take them along and you won't have that much trouble keeping them alive. Uh, there was something else I wanted to know, but now I've gone and forgotten it. Shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow, I'm an idiot. So, let's just... I'll probably think of it as soon as we start back. Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, Lily Points also have, actually have another use. If you lose all your team members, you will actually... Uh, you'll, you will lose, as expected, right? That, that was cool, actually. I like that. This is actually a pretty cool idea for a stage, I have to admit. But yeah, if you have enough Lily Points and you don't have the full complement of characters that you can take along with you on a level, you get... You can revive them using Lily Points. So yeah, if you have a few bunch of people defeated, you can always just spawn in some new ones if you've done the right thing and gotten all your stuff built up. So... Let's get a little bit of power going here. I'm going to spend a bit of time on this turn because... Because I can! Because screw you. Uh, we're probably going to want to give her a bit of a... Actually, no, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go and actually get something killed. Thankfully, we can tell just how much damage we're going to do to something, so I... What if... Can I just use this and... Yeah, less SP. It'll die anyway. <laughs> That's my favorite CPU. By far. And I should probably get it a wait looking at the giant Dugu, because that would be a very stupid idea not to. Uh, let's see. Nap nap. I like that. She always has the... What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? She always has the most entertaining quips. And she references everything. Okay. Then again, there is a character in this game which you haven't seen that I unlocked earlier, which is basically one giant reference to Metal Gear Solid. Which is also kind of hilarious because there's a reference, there's another reference to Metal Gear Solid very early on in the game. Which is actually kind of funny, unlike uh, Saints Row 4, which is just saying ha ha ha. Even though I love Sensor 4, it does have a little bit of trouble sometimes. So, what can we do now? Those three are stuck up there. Thankfully, special moves are actually fairly long range. So, let's see what happens if we move this young lady up here and then try and do a turbo ring. Oh, yes. Unfortunately, that's a very low <laughs> damage move. Let's see if we can... Can we do something else? No, I don't think we can. Oh, what a shame. Oh, well. Turbo remix. Suck it. I'll get some Lily Points for it as well, so... It'll do. Oh, that actually did a fair bit of damage. I don't mind that. And, I mean, this game looks really nice. Just look at it for a second and you can see why. All the character models have been are really well done. They're all very... 
detail, even for being the... I think the word Japan uses is just chibified. I don't know if that's the right word. But it all looks really nice. It runs at a steady frame rate. And just, yeah, presentation-wise, it's great. So we'll just move... We'll just move you up here. Do you have anything that we... Okay, yeah, defensive support. Actually, yeah, we'll give you defensive support and we'll take the free heart points, because why not? And we'll just wait here. So everybody's turned towards the giant Dugu, so no one's going to get completely surprised. And we've got 50 heart points in the bank, so we can probably send Vert into HDD mode and get this done a fair bit quicker. I probably could speed this up a little bit, but, you know, purpose of demonstration and all that. Let's just let everything go and do what, it's, what it wants to do. Yay! Go Nep! <laughs> Gets me every time. It, it just sounds so nerdy. Oh god, what happened to her? She She's dizzy. I love how they just spin around like that when they're dizzy. It's just when you're dizzy, you cut your whatever direction you're facing doesn't matter in terms of your defense. So it's just kind of hilarious to watch them spinning around like that. But yeah, there are a bunch of different stats effects. There's like 18. The tutorial for that is actually a little bit annoying, mainly because they do a um, what's the, what's the thing I'm looking for? They just show you all of them in a list. It's kind of annoying, but it's not that big of a deal. Considering you can actually reference the tutorials at any time just by going into the menu, it's not that big of a problem. So, oh yeah, by the way, don't retreat in the middle of a story mission. You will get a game over. So yeah, you can retreat when you're doing a mission that's not a story mission, but you probably don't want to. Alright, so we have an infinite slash here. Can we do this to our favor? I don't think we can. But, we can go HDD. Hell yes. So even this model looks really nice. I just... It works. It's it's Neptunia. That's what I like about it. Yeah, also going into... Into this mode... Into HDD mode gives you less SP usage, which is... Bloody nice. Kind of annoying that we kind of got stuck with the giant Dugu. It's like, why did we get stuck with it? Screw you, game. Uh, well, we're, go we're gonna have to take this thing out eventually, so we might as well just start blowing XP on it. Um, SP on it, I should say. Okay, so it's 150 damage. Ah, uh, well, you can wait here. You've, you've got all the health you need. Uh, young lady. We'll you get you to use Hurricane Fist, because, you know, the more damage the better, right? Yeah, the strategy itself, while it doesn't do anything particularly... I'm not going to say the word novel, I think the Lily system is a bit novel in itself, but while it doesn't do anything in particular, like, amazing, at the same time, it's still perfectly enjoyable strategy. I mean, it, it really is the same thing as, like, Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth. It works, and... If you get into it, you'll enjoy yourself a lot. But if you can't stand it being so not so much generic as... What's the word I'm looking for? Generic is just average as just full-blown, you know, normal strategy RPG gameplay. Then you'll be absolutely fine and you'll probably enjoy the rest of the game as well. Do I have anybody that can go HDD right now? Unfortunately, I don't. I'll have to send a few people HDD because I don't want to go wasting the lily points. Uh, well, actually, I can do I can do this now. Nice. Uh, well, yeah, we can move her now, and I think that giant Dugu is actually going to go down in the next turn, so it might be a good idea to start sending Noir over this way so we can start stealing her kills. There's also these treasure chests here that require specific affinities, and I imagine they're going to add some more mechanics later on. So, yeah, Noir, you can just wait there. You've still got HDD, so you can still beat the crap out of anything that comes at you, so we'll just end the phase here. 
imagine, as I, as I was saying, I imagine they introduce more stuff later on that's easy enough to enjoy. But I mean, what's got here is a fairly enjoyable system to begin with. I mean, it's again, it does nothing amazing, but at the same time, it's Hyper Dimension Neptunia. Not so much an excuse, but so much as a, it's just meant to be there to... It's meant to be there to help out with the quote-unquote parodying of the strategy RPG just in general, and I really can't argue with that idea. And again, the strategy, the strategy itself actually works, you know, keeping everybody close together, trying to get as many lily points as possible, knowing when to burn all the lily points you have because you get, what, only a hundred of them? Just knowing when to do anything in this game is a fairly vital thing, and yeah, it's it, it's it, I like it. I really do. It's it's a fun time. This isn't even came into the main hyperdimension of shooting a story. So, I mean, while I would recommend having a basic knowledge of all of the hyperdimension of shooting characters to play this, this isn't exactly the worst place to start. And if you wanted to start here, why the hell not, right? Uh, yeah, well, 100 fists just to make sure this thing goes down, get a few free lily points. Bang, 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 bang. And it's just fun to watch, too. Fun to listen to. It's a good story. Oh, she leveled up. How many times did she level up from that? Because it doesn't actually take that much XP to level up. But, oh well, you still feel satisfied when your characters come ahead a few levels and they get some good stat boosts and... You name it, this game's probably got it. So we'll just attack this. Uh, wait there. Do you have enough points to activate your special move? No, you do not. We have to fill up the entire gauge for that. So. Uh, Noir, not Noir, Blanc. You have a, yeah, defense support. So we move you here. Then get you to use your Silhead Spear on this thing to kill it to make sure we have the kill count lead for the next couple of turns. Then we use your defense support skill to bring us up to 100. And just have you move up here so we can start the rush. Everybody else is spam over here. So we just get out her infinite slash. And try and beat the crap out of these two. And we did. That was satisfying. I quite liked that. And unfortunately we have zero hard points left now. So we'll just move her up here so they can't get her to back. Turn her back to that. And we've got nine kills to her too. So it's pretty much guaranteed we're going to win at this point. But nevertheless... We'll just let her suffer a bit more. It is a bit unfair, though. Come on. Six against one. I imagine someone's going to bring that up. Also, the fact that she's been dizzy, that's kind of insane. Yeah, you can't actually break open the chest with special moves. That's kind of annoying, but I understand it. 58 damage plus poison. Not great. 28 damage. Blah. I like how the voice clips just get cut off like that. Over the jump! Alright, so, Noir. Considering that we're not going to have any heart points or anything for the years, we might as well just kill everything that we can get close to. And, you know, we'll send you back over here just so you don't die in this battle. It's not like dying in this game actually does anything. You do get a you do get XP for finishing the game, um, for finishing battles and all that, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, probably could have actually sent her over to attack that chest, and because everybody on my team is currently fire type, but oh well. This this whole mission is probably going to end in a minute anyway, so we might as well just work everybody towards our next marathon run of bonus. Like why not? Oh, 
Ah, uh, wrong, wrong button, kangaroo. Come on, nap. And here we go. Wait, why? Why is it attacking me? Oh, it can attack both of us at the same time. All right, fair enough. Oh, she spent her turn using an item, so no, apparently she gets another turn. That's the. That's not the end of the stage. It didn't die. Okay. Odd. I'll take it. I guess. Uh, here we'll do. Normal attack won't kill it, but this will. This won't. <laughs> uh, okay, never mind. Let's just do this anyway. 113, but not back. Not a big deal. We can just send little Miss Chun Li up here. Ser seriously, if that's not if that's not like a outfit based on Chun Li's, I'm just gonna hit someone. All right. So anyway. This will be the end of the stage. We've seen more than enough to determine my opinion on this. It's damn good strategy, really. I mean, it's basic strategy, sure, but on top of it, it's got that whole hyperdimension Neptunia charm to it, and really can't deny that it's a good time. Everybody should get at least a level up for that. Hello, they even got some bonus stats for that, and yeah, pretty much everybody did get a level up for that, which is neat. And trust me, this game is isn't going anywhere. That wraps up the first match. We beat up so many slight dogs. <laughs> really? You're joshing me. We beat so many more. So how in the world did I win? Her poorly thought out cooperation must have reduced our efficiency. No way! A loss. Suffered via blind ignorance. Such a fool. Unable to bring your I'm just gonna skip to the end of this. Just you, you get the idea. Where's the skip button? I always forget which button it is. It's start, of course it is. But yeah, just as a quick demonstration of what happens, we do have this mission here, and we can go and play it again for more bonuses. So, you know. You've always got more to do. And you wanna see like how much further this game goes. As I said, I'm about four hours in. And I just discovered this in between takes, so this is kind of hilarious. But if we go and look at the video, which contains every cutscene in the entire game... Yeah! That's all the cutscenes! All of them! Every single one! <laughs> so yeah, this has got, this has got a lot of playtime behind it. It's got the Hyper Dimension of Junior Charm, and the strategy itself is perfectly serviceable at worst, and... Very enjoyable at best, despite the fact that it might be a bit generic or thin on the ground or whatever. It's still good! It's still good and it still has that sort of... Battleship Cannons of the Inn thing right now. Yeah. Actually, just... I'm gonna save my game here, because I do plan on coming back to this in the future. What I want to do is I actually want to show off that one little... Melody Solid joke that I saw early on. Look at this. I'm, a, I'm on a, Yeah, it's Snake Hater. Yeah, you, you'd you recognize that pun from... What was it? Hyper Dimension Neptunia PP? The mission this time is... Wait, what was it? Thought I kept a memo here. It's too dark for me to read it. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. I find that great. That's that's awesome. That's an actual, like, joke to Metal Gear Solid's Expanse. That is, that is fantastic. It's just... It's got a whole lot of charm. They're getting better at writing these everyone they localize, I just have to say. Hyper Dimension Neptunia 1 was a bit, I don't know, computery? I don't know if that's the word I would use for it, but they're getting a lot more natural and funny as time goes on. So, Idea Factory International is doing a damn good job with these games, and I really do hope they keep bringing them over. And they are, because Hyper Dimension Neptunia 3 is coming over soon, and Hyper Dimension Neptunia U is coming out in, like, three months. And I've already played that, so you can go check, check that out. But yeah... This was a look at Hyper, Dimension, um, Hyper Devotion Noir, Goddess Blackheart. If you're a fan of Neptunia, pick this up immediately. If you want to get into Hyper Dimension, this isn't a bad place to start. If you don't like strategy games, obviously you want to avoid it, but it's still a perfectly fine and serviceable strategy game by itself. It's no natural doctrine, that I have to say. So yeah. Recommended. I never thought I would say that, but... Yeah, apparently this was made by Sting, and Sting makes a fair few RPGs along the lines of this, so... 
Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a hyperdimension Neptunia strategy game. If that sounds appealing to you, this is a game for you. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.